to midweek here, we are focusing on rooted, grounded, and growing. And now we're focusing on rooted, grounded, and growing in generosity. So tonight, our service will focus on how we are growing in that generosity, in that giving of, of our whole lives to God. And so our service this evening will focus on that. We rejoice that you're with us and we continue to receive offerings for our midweek Lenten service. We receive offerings for local benevolence and that is to help in local needs in our community. One third will go to house and neighborly service. One third will go to council special projects. So projects within our local community that council can designate. And then one third goes towards pastors to be able to give to any special needs for individuals or members in our community that may be having struggles. So we invite you to give your midweek Lenten offerings offerings to the local benevolence. You can note that on the memo line of your check, or if you want to give online at www.zionloveland.com and go to the give tab, you can go to local benevolence. You can mail any checks into the church office or bring them into the church office. We'll take a moment of silence and prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stay with us now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine within you.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your life in our lives. Amen. For our reading this evening, we will be reading from The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by having always enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad. He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others. While they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. As we are focusing on rooted, grounded, and growing in generosity, we hear this passage tonight talking to us about sowing, sowing seeds. We've been focusing a lot on that throughout this time. And tonight it talks about sowing sparingly and sowing bountifully. We hear that if we sow sparingly, that we will also reap sparingly. And if we sow bountifully, we will also reap bountifully. Makes pretty logical sense if you think about it. You put out a lot of seeds, you'd be much more likely to have a big harvest than if you don't plant a lot of seeds. Well, as we reflect on this, Paul talks about sowing and bountiful harvest versus sparingly. But really, then right after that, he talks about giving and giving cheerfully, planting seeds to grow out of generosity. 
We've been focusing throughout Lent on rooted, grounded, and growing. In the first few weeks here, we focused on being rooted and grounded in faith and in thankfulness and in love. And as we continue to reflect on what we're rooted in, we also begin to reflect on how we're starting to grow. How do we grow in love, grow in generosity, and next week we'll focus on growing in service. That we have that strong foundation that comes to us as being rooted and grounded in the faith and in the love and in the thankfulness, and then we begin to, to bloom and to grow. Well, when we think about each of these things kind of growing, it's oftentimes thinking about these seeds. Sometimes if you think about the seed of love, that was one of the things we talked about last week a little bit. If you plant the seed of love, right, we find that the more you give away, the more you have, you know. Um, love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. Well, the same is similarly true in generosity. When we find that we are often richer, the more we give away. Now, I don't mean that we're literally richer, that we have more money if we give away money. That doesn't make a lot of logical sense. But actually what we find is when we give away, that we actually find that our lives are richer, that our lives become full of, of joy, full of contentment, that we find that we have enough, and that there's often more than enough as we give away and share. Oftentimes people will reflect and they'll think that money doesn't buy happiness, and it's actually true, money doesn't buy happiness unless you give away your money. I've shared before, and I find this so powerful, that they've done studies where they will have give um, people five, 10, $20, not a significant amount, but they'll give them money and they'll tell them, the first group, they'll say, go and spend this money on something that you really want. And the second group, they'll say, why don't you go and spend this money on someone else? And, and they'll test their happiness. How happy are you before you get it? And then they'll test how happy they are after they get it. And they found over and over again that the group that finds that they are much happier is the group that actually gave away the money and not the group that bought something awesome for themselves. So that we find that really money can buy happiness when we give away. Truly, we have found that we have enough and that there's more than enough. This is the joy that comes in generosity. In this last year, we've truly had some extreme experiences, intense for all of us. And many people have found in this time that they have had an intensification of not having enough. That many of their basic needs aren't even met. And we've also found an intensification of generosity as well. It's been really fascinating to see over this last year the overwhelming amount of generosity as people seek to share with those who are in need because the need we see around us is great and we seek to share that with others and there's all kinds of instances over this last year we've seen that donations are up to food banks and to local um, food kitchens also interestingly i just read an article is talking about the arts and over the last year they've not been able to have any dramas or dance or um, opera or any of these things over the last year no participation has happened that audiences could come and bring in money and yet over this last year the arts has been able to survive on the generosity of others on the generosity of people sharing their patrons sharing or even foundation sharing and so that the arts are surviving because of the generosity of others and that that gift will continue into the future even small examples in our community there's um, a little free pantry there used to be sometimes i called it a free book pantry but it's a little that's the little food pantry it's actually over on 13th and garfield's the number of little cabinets and people can go and they drop off food and anyone who's in need can come pick up any of those non-perishable items and over and over again throughout this year it's been amazing to see the generosity of what people have brought and that people have stepped forward to really provide for the need even here at zion people have stepped forward to give to member assistance as we've helped others within our community with medical bills or food or utilities or rent some of those basic things as we seek to have generosity and share with each other even throughout this let we have the purple bags hopefully you're filling up your purple grocery bag right now um, gathering that food for house of neighborly service because we all are seeking to share with those who are finding themselves in need and we find that when we do that 
we experience so much joy as well. It's like a seed that's been planted and as it grows and blooms, then more and more are shared. And so we found in this time that while in some ways we may have become more disconnected, in other ways we become more connected, connected to care for each other connected to share, connected in our generosity. And as we seek to move forward into whatever this new future brings, we seek to grow in generosity, that we would sow abundantly and bountifully so that we may also reap bountifully as well. As we move into whatever this new normal brings, we pray that we find ourselves rooted and grounded in that faith and gratitude and love of God. And then that fills us so that we begin to grow in our love and in our generosity and in our service. And so I invite you in your small groups now, we're gonna reflect some on generosity and times in your life, maybe when you've experienced the generosity of receiving or maybe when you've more experienced the joy of giving and how much joy you had that you have felt that abundance because you shared with someone else. Um, so we're gonna spend some time discussing that in our groups. I know you guys have amazing stories to share with each other. And so um, I look forward to you guys having some time together in small group to be able to share those with each other. Amen. That's great for us. Awesome. I think is everyone back in? I think we are. So welcome back from our breakout. I hope you had a great time and conversation here um, talking about those generous stories. I feel like our group had a lot more we could have talked about. So I hope your group did as well. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. went from God to a town called Nazareth to a woman whose name was Mary. The angel said to her, Rejoice, O highly favored, for God is with you. You shall be shall be Jesus, the chosen one of God most high. And Mary said, I am the servant of my God, I live to do.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people that peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God, praise and praise to you. May God greater bless us and keep us. May Christ be ever light to our lives. May the Spirit of love be our guide and love for all of our Thank you for joining us this evening for our whole evening prayer. It has been a joy to have you with us. We hope that you have enjoyed this special music brought to you by Adam Torres and Noel Bauman Stuckey. We um, will up and open the chat up. So if you want to share any blessings with each other or any conversations with each other, um, and we pray that you would continue to have that generosity growing and blooming in your life. Go with the peace of Christ.